When we're desperate, we pray, please God, now God, or why God? I'm not doubting anyone's belief, but do we utter in any part of our prayer and pleading before God, help me overcome my unbelief? From the studios of the Ram Cave, in the home of the camellias, I'm Joe Terosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for December the 5th, 2023. As always, we are praying for our young people. Today, we're going to be in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 20 through 24. This is episode number 176 of a ministry without parole. I'm <clears throat> very excited to be here today. A uh, little, little scratch in my throat. I'm going to drink some coffee, get it, <clears throat> uh, get it uh, cleared up a little bit. Feeling good, though. It's just allergy stuff. But uh, I love it. I'm on before 11 a.m. Uh, it's like 10.59 right now, but I'm on before 11, so I feel pretty good about myself. But uh, we're going to look at this scripture. We're going to pray, uh, do the application, pray, and get out of here. And as I always say, this is an application. There are deep dives in all of scripture that you can take, uh, but those are better set for Bible study. <clears throat> and so we're just going to do an application, uh, help us get focused for the day, and hit our prayer request, and hopefully get you out of here before the dreaded 15-minute tone. All right. Uh, Mark chapter uh, 9 verses 20 through 24 in this passage the disciples couldn't uh help this boy who was being uh, possessed by an evil spirit and uh you know they, they can't do it and then finally jesus shows up and uh, it starts where the, we're going to pick up the passage where they bring the boy to jesus and uh so chapter 9 of mark picking up at verse 20 so they brought him this is the boy when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If I can, or if you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Uh, as far as the application here is, this underrated passage hits me with that last line, right? But before we get there, let's look at the rest of it so we can stay in some sort of context. The young son is possessed by a spirit. Uh, and when that spirit sees Jesus, it brings about a violent reaction. Uh, and, and this is something we're, we're kind of conditioned to ignore nowadays, or we're conditioned just to say, that person's crazy. You know, we're conditioned to say, uh, um, when we see, we see the homeless encampments, right? And the, the stuff that's happening in those homeless encampments, we're, 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 we're liable to say, that's just mental illness, or that's just drug use, or they're just poor. They just don't have anything, you know? Uh, we're conditioned to look for all these other answers but quite often what we fail to see is there's a spiritual thing happening there and uh, there's a there's a spiritual presence there and we get these kind of rack reactions today I, I i can tell you i'm not trying to turn it into spook stories or anything like that but these reactions still happen today uh, because when something from the other realm crosses paths with paths with you as a believer it's not you it's Jesus in you that frightens them. I, I can go into story after story of, 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 of these things, but it's true. And we write it off. Oh, it's mental illness. But it's not always that. Uh, there is a spiritual uh, point involved. Um, and so Kelly McCoy, good morning from Vacaville. Uh, I'll be with you in a second, Kelly. Uh, I'll answer that question. I saw you wrote something else. But uh, it's the Jesus in you that frightens the spirits. Uh, and so you see the violent reaction that happens when they bring this boy to Jesus. It says the boy's been like this since childhood. And the parents say, or the father says, trying to kill him by fire or drowning. But when I hear that, when I read that line, it demonstrates to me the care uh, the parents and the family have. They weren't going to lose their son. And they said from childhood on that they've been living with this for years. And Think of these parents, right? They, I mean, these, these parents are grinders because they are not going to give up on their son. They love their son. 
Uh, they weren't going to lose him. And it's safe to assume by the way Jesus interacts with them and they say, can you do anything to help us? It's safe to assume that the religious leaders in their community had been powerless to help them. And they are begging anyone for help. Hey, as someone who had been in that sick kid realm, um, you are. You are looking to anybody who can help you. Uh, they are battling hopelessness as well as exhaustion. So Jesus responds back, if you can, as like, do you know who you're talking to? Uh, so he says, if you can, he shoots back at them. And, and Tarosian's translation here, he says, hey man, everything is possible for those that believe. And uh, I don't know why this isn't everyone's life verse, right? <coughs> because we're not believing for the sake of wealth, fame, or personal gain. That would be putting the things of man ahead of the things of God, right? But when putting the things of God ahead of the things of man, keeping that POV that everything is possible for those who believe, then everything is possible for those who believe. Is it hard? Absolutely, because you and me are human, right? Uh, but, but look at what the Father says in the last line. And this is the line of the passage. To me, it's the most valuable line, right? If there was an MVP in this passage, this is it. The, the, the Father says, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. When we're desperate, we pray, please God, now God, why God? Um, I'm not doubting anyone's belief, but do we utter in any part of our prayer and pleading before God, help me overcome my unbelief? I haven't heard that too much in a public setting, in a church setting. Um, but uh, these last few years at our church, uh, my personal life, it has been faith that has carried me through because I'm finite, I'm human. And that holy, and it's not always been the case where I could just say, I believe, right? I know when we're preaching the gospel, living the gospel, teaching the gospel, we are in God's will. We were right on. We are right on course. So I'm good with that. My belief's not an issue, but my unbelief is right there with me, pressing in and trying to gain space. You know, maybe something's wrong with you. Maybe you're not hearing God the way God wants to hear you. Uh, maybe there's something in your life that God's disappointed with, or <coughs> yada yada yada, or or maybe it's not all real. Maybe I'm a fool. You know. So your unbelief is right there with you always and with me, always trying to press in and gain space. And this man, this dad, much like us, he believes, he goes, I believe. But he also says, help me, Jesus, to overcome my unbelief. I've been praying that prayer. And my question would be, do we pray that prayer as a group? Lord, help me overcome my unbelief. You have every reason uh, and to, to have this kind of mindset this day and age uh, with all the things we see. You hold on to your faith, yet you still don't get it. You still, don't, you still ask why. Why are these things happening? And you begin that creeping doubt in the back of your head. That's the enemy <coughs> trying to convince you, right? My job, our job, is to remain in Christ and to pray when we have doubt, right? We don't go looking for another preacher. We don't go looking for another answer. We don't go looking for some other guru. We don't look for another politician. When we begin to have doubts about something or it starts to gain traction, we don't embrace it. We don't cultivate it. We don't nurture it. But we go to Jesus and ask us, ask him to help us overcome our doubt or unbelief. We, I, I never hear people saying this. I, I don't hear say, Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And we need to make that part of our prayer. We need to make that part of the routine of our prayer. Lord, I'm praying because I'm being obedient, but Lord, help me, help me overcome my unbelief because I'm human and I'm finite and I can't help uh, but being less than, right? Part of our fight, as we talk about this being a spiritual battle, part of our fight needs to be focused on that unbelief attempting to haunt us and stall us from going on in the Lord. When we decide to fight for the things of God rather than the things of man, right? When we decide to admit that there is unbelief and tackle that unbelief through prayer, when we are ready to fight in the right theater of war through prayer, study of the word, 
in gently and courageously standing, we hurt the enemy. And that's the turning point. That will be the turning point for our young people, for us, and for our world. And folks, that is divine power. That is a power the world cannot cope with or understand. That is the power that destroys demonic strongholds and demolishes arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against Christ. That is the power that comes by Christ's presence in your life. And that is what we want for our young people. And that is why we pray for our young people. And that's why we'll win. So be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. And I'll add this. When unbelief and doubt comes, pray to the Lord and let him help you with your unbelief. Let him add encouragement to you. Let him give you direction. Let him comfort you in those moments. And he will build you up. Um, as I've prayed uh, in those moments like, oh, Lord, are we doing the right thing? Are we staying on track? Uh, I find myself, Lord, just just uh, help me with my unbelief. Help me, you know, that little that little drop of encouragement, that little thing. And, uh, and we receive it and we keep going forward. Amen? Amen. Oh, wow. Busy morning here. I, I didn't see the questions. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, obviously, Kelly, yes, we are going to keep continue to pray for your mom. It's an honor. John Halliday, awesome. Ryan Storms, good morning. Shea Stewart from Granite Ridge, thank you so much for clicking on. Jan from Monrovia, thank you. And Mindy May, all the way from Lemoore, thank you so much for clicking on today. Thank you for your comments. Folks, if you could hit the, the, the like buttons, the share buttons, uh, all those things really help us stay in the algorithm. It's a weird thing taking place. Uh, uh, and as I, sometimes I can't even see who is online. So, Mr. Storms, I see you there. I don't think I acknowledged you. Thank you uh, for clicking on. So, we're going to get to our prayer requests. Uh, we've got, uh, obviously, our young people are, uh, are those who have influence in them that we pray for every day. And then we're going to keep going down our list of everyone we pray for. Former minister named Tammy Monk Voschel, we are praying for at the beginning of the year. She had cancer, leukemia, had a, had a, a, a bone marrow surgery. She is healed now, but her body is still, it's still taking a physical toll. And she's in this middle ground about whether she can keep working or not. Be in prayer for Tammy McVoshell. Mrs. McCormick, who lives in the Inland Empire, her prayer request comes to us from Darlene up in Washington. And she has uh, an intestinal disease that causes violent intestinal distress. Be in prayer for her. We have a young man named Matt. Uh, he is the son-in-law of our own Jenna Griffin, part of Burbank Faith Virtual. And uh, her daughter, Krista, is married to Matt. Matt had a mass discovered on his liver uh, in a couple of days. He's going in for an MRI to find out exactly what that is. So let's be in prayer. Christine Salmas is another one we were praying for. She has no cancer, but is looking at surgery at the beginning of the year. So we're keeping her on this prayer list through the month of December. Anthony Huerta, broken ankle, goes to see the doctor on December 8th. Hopefully he'll be able to go back to work. His wife, Vivian, has a brother-in-law named Richard. He's got a health issue, but more importantly, a salvation issue. We're praying for him. Mike, our former gang member, who has taken his steps and walking and grateful for all your prayers. Uh, I never even met Mike. His name was brought to us. And so uh, feel honored that people are coming and bringing prayers here so we can pray uh, for them. John Strickland in North Carolina. Bill Alajaji's looking good. Roxy Clark has a number of procedures coming up. She's going to have a busy month of December uh, in terms of procedures. Jay Sturgeon uh, battling Parkinson's in Pasadena. Uh, Heather, our young girl looking for salvation. We've never met her. Rafi, our neighborhood boy. Corey and Christy uh, was passed on to me that they are having an even harder time right now emotionally uh, at the passing of their son. It's been a year. So be in prayer for Corey and Christy in NorCal. Frank Griffin, we continue to pray for him in Arizona. Richard Stewart in Vegas. Jan, our 88-year-old Marine in Sun Valley. Piper and her son Grayson. Grayson battles crab leukodystrophy up in Idaho. And those battling cancer. Kelly was thanking us for the prayers for his mom, Stella. Uh, she has lung cancer. She's 91. Uh, she's in comfort care. Uh, Kim Dedini going through chemo. Rachel Gilbert. Dion Nizzi up in Oregon. Colby Van Dyke, our great friend. Tim Burns. 
uh, and Kathy, woman we have not met, battling breast cancer. Uh, Vision Paradise, Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis, Edgar, uh, Granite Ridge, and of course Burbank Faith and our ministries there, and Granite Ridge Home Camp. Keep those <coughs> in prayer. I was just uh, jumped the gun to Granite Ridge because I hit the, the dreaded 15-minute uh, tone. Uh, so let's pray, and then let's get you guys on your way. All right. Lord, we ask for our young people today, God. And uh, Lord, we pray that they could find a place uh, in their life, not only for a prayer life, but uh, a, a, an interaction with you, Lord, a time with you where they could say, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Uh, Lord, we pray that for our, our, our people that have influence over our young people, Lord, that when uh, we are fearful or we don't have all the answers, Lord, and maybe we have some doubts, Lord, that we would pray specifically for our unbelief. And Lord, let us model this life for our young people to see, give our young people discernment to see the fraudulence of this world. Lord, we pray for their safety and protection, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you are doing battle in the spiritual realms, Lord, for us, Lord, that you would clear out our schools and, and keep those voices of evil from bleeding over into our realm and having influence, Lord. Lord, take away those voices, Lord, uh, in both the spiritual and in this physical realm, Lord. Silence those voices, Lord. And if you have to uh, overturn the world, Lord, overturn the world um, as we pray for our young people and fellow imagers that they would come into a right relationship with you. Lord, we ask for those on our prayer list, Lord. We pray for Tammy. We pray for Mrs. McCormick. We're praying for Matt, Krista, and Jenna. We're lifting up Christine, Anthony Huerta, Richard, Mike. We're praying for John in North Carolina, Bill Alajaji, Roxy, Jay, Heather, the young lady we don't know, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you are introducing people into her life, Lord, that would speak salvation to her, Lord. We're praying for Rafi, our neighborhood boy. And Lord, we're praying for Corey and Christy as they are in pain. And so, Lord, we ask that you can come and take away their pain. Be with Frank Griffin in Arizona, Richard Stewart in Vegas, Jan in Sun Valley, Piper and Grayson in Idaho. Lord, we ask for those battling cancer, the treatment of cancer, the toll that cancer takes emotionally. Stella McCoy, Kim Didini, Rachel Gilbert, Dion in Oregon, Colby, Tim Burns, and Kathy. And, and, and that toll, Lord, that it takes not only on the individual, but their family around them, Lord. We pray blessings and peace for them. Pray for Vision Paradise. We pray for Burbank Faith. We pray for your timing, Lord, on a, the right Armenian ministry to come and round out our ministry uh, uh, roster there at 505 South 6th Street. And we also pray for Home Camp. We pray for Granite Ridge as uh, Granite Ridge readies to turn the corner uh, as we celebrate this holiday season, Lord, these holy days. But knowing that in January, the clock starts on the Outsiders calendar for Granite Ridge as we get ready for kids winter camp, youth winter camp, um, the, the Bible quiz jamboree, women's retreat, uh, CIT, kids camp, youth camp again in the summer, family camp, the eSports camp, the unique thing we do with eSports, as well as man camp again in the fall. Lord, uh, make us ready for this great season. Uh, coming towards us uh, in terms of camps. Lord, uh, bless us this Christmas season and let it be the best it's ever been. Lord, let us shine for you. And Lord, when we have doubts and unbelief, Lord, help us to ask you directly. Help me with my unbelief. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name because there is no other. Amen. All right. Only three minutes and 40 seconds past the dreaded 15-minute tone. Okay, guys, thank you so much for clicking on. We are going to download this and share it all over social media. Uh, if you uh, have not subscribed to us on uh, YouTube, go to our Burbank Faith Virtual channel and hit subscribe uh, as we just build our footprint. We want separate platforms because, you know, we don't control the platforms, but the more places we are, the less opportunity is for us to be shut down. So uh, check us out uh, on those other platforms and hit like hit share, hit uh, respond, all those things, and that keeps us in the algorithm. And uh, all right, so God bless, take care, and uh, we will see you very, very soon. God bless, guys. Thank you for clicking on. Um, now my number's climbed up just as I'm going to say goodbye. Was everyone excited when I was saying goodbye? Okay, God bless, guys. We will see you soon.